everyone. Guillaume Mitzvel here, host of the E-Commerce Wizards podcast, where I feature top leaders in e-commerce and business. Today's guest is Valentin Radu, a CEO of OmniConvert. And today we'll be talking about the mindset optimization for e-commerce CEO and probably lots of other things. So Valentin has built a suite of, uh, of software that he'll tell us a little bit about in a moment and has a very ambitious goal and realistic goal, I, I believe, I mean, uh, to go with an IPO, an initial public offering. So best of luck in that goal. Uh, ambitious goal, I guess it must be inspiring for, for, your, for your employees to go toward that, especially to build such a, a nice suite of software, many software at this point. So just before we get started, our sponsorship message, this episode is brought to you by Mage Montreal. If your business wants a powerful e-commerce online store that will increase their sales, or to move piled up dormant inventory to free up cash reserves, or to automate business processes to gain efficiencies and reduce human processing error, our company, Mage Montreal, can do that. We've been helping e-commerce stores for over a decade. Here's the catch. We're specialized and only work on the Adobe Magento e-commerce platform. We do everything Magento. If you know someone who needs design, development, maintenance, training, support, we got their back. Email our team, support at magemontreal.com, or go to magemontreal.com. That's M-A-G-E, montreal.com. All right, so Valentin, I'm happy to have you here today. Hey there, Guillaume, and uh, hello, everyone. I'm really excited to, to get this going. Yeah, and to start here, can you please tell us a little bit about your entrepreneurship journey and the, 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 the software that you've built here? Yeah, sure. I've started as a, an ex-poor kid from Bucharest, Romania. I was struggling to, to make the cut. My, uh, I was making something like 1,000 US dollars per year. And uh, that was back in 2000. Uh, I've uh, started to play StarCraft to understand strategy. Then I've built a, a network to play StarCraft with my neighbors. Then it was Battle.net. And we wanted to, to I don't know, to, to compare our skills with the, the big world, with the, to play on the Battle.net. Uh, and we, we, we started uh, to, to get broadband connection over there. Some neighbors that stated that they need to get in touch with their relatives from, uh, from abroad. And we turned out the, uh, that into a business quickly. In three years, we got from four clients to 4,000 clients, subscribers to our uh, broadband uh, connection internet service provider. And we, uh, at that moment, I've understood the power of entrepreneurship and uh, how cool it is to be like a rock star because entrepreneurship, if you do it well, you're like the next uh, rock stars, right? You, you attract a lot of uh, attention. You have a lot of uh, people that are recognizing your your uh, skills, abilities, and the way you help them. And uh, then I've, I've said, okay, let's do the next, uh, le le let's do the next uh, company. Failed miserably, uh, got to go back to my father's uh, apartment. I had to choose between keeping the, the office or going back to my father's apartment and to uh, hear him saying, uh -huh, you wanted to build companies, who wants to do that? Whatever. So uh, fortunately, I, I've built an, uh, an agency at that moment. It was 2005. Nobody wanted the uh, website at, at that moment. It was, it was really hard to do it. Uh, however, I've uh, identified an opportunity together with uh, one of our customers. They were selling online car insurance and uh, we teamed up. I was very good at uh, looking at data patterns, identifying trends. I was uh, spotting this as a great opportunity because it was a blue ocean. And I, uh, I've, I've built this together with him. We invested something like $700 uh, back in 2013 after doing a lot of stuff there, handling website, marketing, campaigns, viral, guerrilla marketing, whatever, everything that you can imagine for that e-commerce company. We got to 14 million in uh, turnover. And I, I've said, it's time to go to, to, to share this knowledge and to, to build a company that is doing software and is helping other e-commerce entrepreneurs like I was struggling to, to make the cut because... We were investing something like 1 million US dollars in Google ads and Facebook ads, and we were only breaking even. And it was so frustrating. So at that moment, we realized, I realized how important it is to do conversion rate optimization. I was using a software that we produced internally. We had a team of 12 people building a software for, for our own needs. And we, I decided that this is a great opportunity. That's when I started Omniconvert with the purpose of helping other e-commerce companies thrive without uh, over-investing in, uh, in uh, acquisition, in demand generation. Uh, after that, we, we, lot, we got a lot of attention. We, we grew the company. 
we started to sustain a lot of uh, brands from uh, all over the all over the world. At this moment, we decided to focus completely on customer value optimization. I'm a strong believer in lifecycle marketing after two decades of acquisition marketing. I think it's time to take care about the customer retention and customer lifetime value. That was something that helped me do the exit from my former e-commerce company. And at this moment, we are doing this uh, kind of uh, tools, uh, a, a, a tool for doing A-B testing, for doing surveys, to do customer segmentation, so that we empower other companies to, to uh, become data-driven and customer-centric. Uh, we also do trainings for other agencies. We have an academy where we train other people to do customer value optimization. So pretty much we do a lot of stuff which has to do with the total life cycle uh, of, of the customers from, uh, from e-commerce company. Yeah, th thank you for that beautiful summary and, and journey of entrepreneurship. I can relate uh, to some of those things that you said there for sure. Uh, well, big StarCraft fan myself as well. I was playing, uh, you know, nations versus nations for Team Canada with against other countries. There. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so love that game. Spent way too many hours on it uh, when I was a, a teenager. And, and what, what's your favorite race? Yeah. Protoss. 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 Yeah, I played them same all, here. Though. Yeah, okay. <laughs> all right. So there was that. And I can relate also, you know, you you failed. You say your first, uh, well, your second business, that that didn't go. I, yeah. I never had one go under. I never failed one, but I remember like my, I, I used to be a professional visual artist and then did the transition to entrepreneur. And my father said, you're a great visual artist. You're a terrible businessman when I was starting, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, um, so, and then it's just like fun to laugh about it now, like more or less 15 years uh, later and, and with the success yeah. we've had, it's like, yeah, well, I had to learn uh, at first and uh, there was some struggle and, and now it's great, you know? So th that's an interesting Thing that almost everybody in their entrepreneurship journey will typically need to, to live at one point. There's the learning curve, and there's people yeah. around you believe in what you're doing or not, or how it's tough, or like, ah, blah, blah, blah. but no, yeah. hey, we 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 made it. Actually, we made it. You know, so that, that's great. Yeah, the 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 best thing is uh, when you pass the messy middle. I think in entrepreneurship, when uh, when when you pass the, the 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 initial spike of enthusiasm, you know, when you're really excited, I'm going to start this, I'm going to do this. And then you have the messy middle, like Seth Godin says, nobody talks about those struggles. Nobody talks about the average yeah. Joe, which is struggling to make the cut and to pay his employees and to find out what's all about. Yeah. And then when you got out of the, the this messy middle and you start to actually realize what's all about and you start to, to, to systemize things and to... To, to, to put in place the processes and the right people at the right place, then uh, you, you can uh, look back and you can say, you know what, I, I, I made it, but it's, uh, it's so hard to, to do it at some moments. And I think this, uh, this journey has a lot to do with resilience. If it's something that you need to build up as an entrepreneur, maybe we have uh, entrepreneurs in the audience. I think resilience is something which is so underrated and everybody talks about creativity, about the networking skills and whatever, but uh, at the end of the day, it's uh, it's a uh, it's not a sprint, uh, it's not a marathon, it's an ultra marathon. It's like Iron Man, you know, and you need uh, to prepare yourself for for a long run. I, I totally agree, and I had a, another guest here, uh, Vinny Fisher, also built an almost nine figure business, and he says that the number one tip or rule for him for success is just don't quit. You know, just yeah. keep going, you know, because yes, there's, there's so much difficulties when you start and when you build this and it's very different when you start from nothing, uh, like we've both done, then if you, you yeah. build something that's already there, big foundation, and then you grow it, uh, to the next, uh, to the next level, you know, it's a very different ball game. So uh, it, it, you can see it sometime in generational, uh, entrepreneurship that the first generation it took the father, like everything just to, to get, I don't know if, maybe 5 million, like oh. we hear Gary V or stuff like that. I don't remember if it was exactly 5 million. Yes. Then next generation yeah. comes in just like, boom, 60 million. <laughs> like, you know, but he started yeah. from that 5 million baseline from the father. So, yeah, um, yeah it's interesting. Like, like Trump said at some point, I got no help from anyone. You know, my father yeah, right. gave me $1 million. I mean, <laughs> UMF. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's funny. But more than that, his father owns so many, so much real estate, so many doors, as they say. Yeah, so yeah. his father was already a multi multi millionaire. Uh, yeah, of course, you get the contact, the credibility, maybe even an endorsement nobody knows about. Who knows? You know? 
But yeah, it's not and the all. winner's advantage because your mindset is not like you are struggling to survive. I mean, the baseline, I was actually not uh, running towards uh, prosperity. I was running out of uh, poverty. You know, it, I yeah. wasn't running towards a goal. I was running from the fears. And it's kind of uh, different when you're, uh, yeah, you're, you're running because of that. You're, you're, you're not aspiring to do some fantastic stuff. You just want to get out of poverty. I, 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 I couldn't afford to buy a pretzel when I was in high school. You know, I, and I, I still remember those feelings. And fortunately, looking back right now, I think that was an immense motivation agent for me. So I'm, I'm really happy that it turned out to be this way. Yeah, so for sure, uh, you know, grit, resilience, and then a lot of mindset optimization, because sometimes you're creating that pain yourself in a way by putting too much resistance in the wrong direction. Maybe you need to pivot a little bit here and, try to yeah. surf the wave a little bit more, not row the ocean. So yeah. sometimes you need to, to have a, that mindset adjustment. And, and what do you have here in, in mind, actually, about the you know, say mindset optimization for, for CEO or e-commerce CEO? Yeah, I think it's, a, it's an inner game, which is so much, uh, it's so tricky, Guillaume, because if you think about it, we live uh, inside our minds the whole time. You know, we have this... Uh, interaction with the outside world we have these objectives towards uh, i don't know to make uh, this uh, this figure or to reach a certain step but at the end of the day you're with yourself all the time and uh, you have this uh, inner talk you know i mm -hmm. i have Thank been God. optimized the the my, the way that i'm talk i'm talking with myself for for, for all, more than a decade you know i i've been starting from I don't know, talking very bad with me, just to, to say it's soft, you know, uh, uh, when I failed on, on some particular things like doing that, achieving that, that result and whatever. And I, I've started so hard. And I think this mindset optimization, it should be prioritized by, by a lot of entrepreneurs, but also not only about entrepreneurs, any high achiever, because if you're here and you're listening for, uh, to this, it's clear that you want to learn and you want to uh, uh, level up your game. And your understanding about life, and I think the first thing would be to to fix the uh, the mindset that you have. Are you a winner or are you a loser? Are you trying or are you doing it? So those type of nuances are so important because if you craft your own your your inner character, let's say if you if you write your own story, you have to make sure that you're not uh, let's say uh, stopping yourself. From uh, from evolving, you know, because you can be your worst enemy and you can be your 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 biggest ally. And I think the the idea would be here to to optimize continuously the mindset. And there are a certain tools for that. I've been uh, I've been doing this uh, journaling, you know, to state to have a, a, a somehow objective way to see what's important for me and how how do I interpret the reality? Because your mind can be so tricky, you know. When you're an, an entrepreneur, you are working on so many projects at the same time. You have to care, take care of that. You need to, to hire another person. You have that client. You have that perspective. You have the p and the budget. You are working on, on so many different levels at the same time. And it's like in StarCraft, right? You need to take care about that, that battle over here. You need to build, uh, to have the resources. You have to, 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 to work on so many different uh, levels at the same time. And uh, what I found throughout my entire journey is that observing the way I uh, interpret the reality is the trick. So it's like adding an, a, a distance between what I think is happening and how I look at myself that thinks that this is happening. And journaling was an, a, a, a great instrument because dumping your, uh, your thoughts over there allows you to gain clarity and to prioritize what's important because you can get so easy trapped into a thinking that you know what you you can outsource that you can delegate that to other uh, other people because once you can fire yourself from being uh, the single employee and you have the first follower you know the first uh, individual which is following in your dream and it's your first employee you you think that yeah i, I should do that and i think delegating it's a uh, it's a tricky it's a tricky tool because you can't delegate certain aspects for instance learning about your business model learning about how to thrive 
If you're the visionary, you have to always learn and you can't delegate. You can't outsource this to us, to an agency or to a, a professional or to a freelancer or whatever. You need to learn continuously about how to over deliver to your clients. Yeah. And that's, that means to do research. That means to be there at the forefront of innovation in your, uh, in your industry, in your particular business. And I, I'm not speaking here only about outstanding innovative uh, companies. You can even sell donuts and you can innovate in, in that front. You, know? you can come up with different recipes. You can do a different customer experience. You can package those donuts differently. And it's all about being different and uh, respecting this principle of under-promise and over-deliver. But it's all coming from having the right mindset and continuously learning about what you're doing yeah, you touch on a lot of important topics so one of those that like you say to have some kind of distance to to okay you're living an emotion you're living a hard situation but instead of like feeling it and being lost in it you're sort of conscious okay this is happening and and you can take a step back and sort of look at it in a more detached way uh, to have a, so so that that attitude of being detached, I believe is, is one of the really, really great skill set. And, and I, I call it like being responsible, but detached. So you do what is just, what is right. And you're responsible. You're, you're not, you're not sloppy. You're not lacking on any of your yeah. responsibilities, but you're more detached in the mindset, uh, you know, uh, almost like, I love like, that, a, yeah. like almost like a computer would handle the situation in a more a very rational way. Um, yeah. uh, also, um, let's say talking about that too, And let's say here in Canada and Quebec, the uh, professional order of psychologists, they recommend uh, mindfulness meditation, which is totally uh, separate from any kind of spiritual or religious uh, practice. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, mindfulness and really helps with, with this stuff. If somebody wants to go a bit further, then you have the people who will have a spiritual view on this. We'll add another layer on top of it, like uh, Eckhart Tolle or uh, yeah. Michael Singer that will really, really help with the, you know, the mindset and improving yourself over time to, to handle difficult situation in, in a more and more serene way as time goes and your skill increase. You know? Yeah. And, and is, and is this uh, thin line between what's happening on the outside and what's happening on the inside. And in this game, I think uh, it, it was a saying that the only way out is in. And I think it's so crucially important to, to always focus on the inside because if something goes wrong in your business, you have to go to open a door, to go to the bathroom, to look in the mirror, and you, you're going to find who's responsible for the fact that you are experiencing something bad in your, in your business. And I think the, uh, the trap is to, to, to come up and uh, blame the external uh, conditions, your employees and whatever, but who who decided to do this business, who decided to get those employees and not the others. And you're, you're, it's such a, let's say, liberating thought when you realize that you're actually responsible because uh, together with this realization, it's also coming the power to, to, to play around and to turn around the situation. And it's, uh, it's so crazy how, how you are, uh, let's say, deforming the reality and uh, just a single event that's occurring, let's say, You have a client which is uh, uh, not, uh, uh, not there for you. They give up on you or you have an employee which is letting you down in the, before an important deadline. So there are many things that are happening in, in the life of an entrepreneur. But the, the trick is not to fall into the trap of, uh, let's say, blaming the whole, the whole cookie, you know, the, whole, the whole pancake. Because you are doing a lot of cool stuff and this is just a single aspect. It's not everything. So it, If you can detach yourself from this, if you can look at this objectively, if you can if you can gain this distance, you'll be you'll be in a better position to come up with the inspired decisions. And all that you are crafting in the at the end of the day is how you make inspired decisions, right? How you are improving your decision making system. And the I think why the entrepreneurs are having so much success in uh, in the professional life is that they have a sample size of many decisions for, for the same uh, time unit, you know? In a single year, it's like you're making thousands of decisions, big and small, but you're making them fast. And eventually you, you come up to train how to make uh, decisions because you, you had so many bad decisions and myself included, you know, I, I've made so, so, 
so huge mistakes that I've, but I've learned from that. And the, the, the beauty of it is that you can risk and you can make some conscious, uh, 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 take some conscious risk, which are not putting, endangering the whole, the whole company, the whole, the whole system. And I think that's, that's what we're after. And that's what I call mindset optimization to, to look at yourself, to continuously journal. If you like this, I think it's a great instrument because having that, it's giving you an objective perspective over how you are thinking. Yeah, uh, I, I don't personally journal, but I do believe that all your planning should be done in writing and not in your yeah. mind. It will give you another added level of clarity, even if you first thought it was already clear in your mind. That, that is yeah. for sure for me. And you're talking about also uh, accountability, basically, as a CEO, you're accountable for everything. Of course, some things you haven't even done yourself, but if you have not put in place a proper system to prevent that from happening, so you're always accountable for everything. And, and, that, and that's tough. Sometimes you have a bunch of problems just explode them over there and say, oh, crap, I didn't see that coming. And then you have to handle all this and say, well, I'm accountable for it. But if you beat yourself yeah. over it, it, that's not going to be good for your mental health or the success of the company or the morals of the troop or whatever. And then it comes back to your idea of being detached. And some yeah. things that could help with this, I have two a concept in mind. There's one um, that is shared by Michael Singer that he says, you know, all that chatter in your mind, like, oh, uh, what will that person think? Is my email good? Is a quote good enough? Oh, yeah. how would that go? And, and all that anxiety model, that, that chatter in your mind, he just calls it the crazy roommate. So this is your crazy <laughs> roommate and, and you can yeah. sort of detach yourself from the crazy roommate and just observe the situation and say, no, no, none of that, you know? So that, that's an interesting concept. And the other one yeah. is the concept of ego. Like, uh, I have a slightly wider definition of the ego, human ego, than, than most people. Like the first level is people say, oh, an ego, like someone who is very pretentious, uh, maybe he's driving around the Ferrari, he's thinking he's somebody else, whatever, and, then, and they say that's the ego. But to me, the ego is way more than that. It's not necessarily that much about being pretentious. Like, okay, somebody says something and you're feeling hurt. Well, are you hurt? I mean, you're not bleeding. You're not hurt. Yeah. Like what's hurt, okay? It's your mental conception of yourself. It's your ego yeah. that is feeling hurt so okay so that thing is bothering me that's happening in my business uh but what's bothered really it's like my ego things are not going as i wanted them to go but i can detach myself again from this and it always comes back to that exercise of getting yeah. out of your own way i had heard that quote before many times i said well okay there's a few uh, bad habits to improve maybe there's this the, with tony robin there's the the to-do list, but it's also the stop doing list. Like, okay, stop going to bed so late so that I'm tired next morning. Okay. Yeah. Eventually, eventually that, that was solved after stopping playing StarCraft, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. you know, so you have to stop doing this. Sure. You have the to-do list, the things to improve on, but then it goes further than that. And, and it's, it's so much a, a personal journey, entrepreneurship. You, you're always like you're seeing learning and improving yourself because life is challenging you in so many ways and you have to get out of your own way. And I believe that the your own way is mostly your ego, actually. Yeah. That is working against you in many ways. And, and if you can get your ego totally out of the way, like things improve in uh, amazing ways. That's right. That's right. Uh, I, I think, Guillaume, an uh, uh, underrated activity is to, to, to see how much progress have you, have you done so far. And... Uh, and uh, an important aspect is that that you can identify yourself with the character that you're playing. If you if you have this approach to have to put some distance between who you are and your external results, you know, because you are not your external results. You are not your plans. You're not your future expectations. You, you, you those are yours, but you are not theirs. So when you when you put this uh, this distance, you you come up to a place where it's so. Uh, serene you know it's so it's so it, it's silence and you you can consciously decide to to get into the characters uh, whatever crazy mental noise or you can stay over here when where you consciously decide to play this character and i i i got to so into so many difficult situations from this perspective i mean my character got into so many crazy situations but uh, having this uh, the, this uh, mental uh, game you know to to put some distance and to always understand that today 
is a new day. And I, it's like I'm being teleported in today where I have a lot of things to, to, to tackle. For instance, yesterday I had the crazy day. So I, uh, we, we were doing some a full management day. I, I got two workshops to do in the, uh, during the uh, breakup instead of eating. And then afterwards I, do, I did another webinar live and then I got with my uh, to to a friend's anniversary. Then I realized I I had the news that my my uh, do, my my kid has a broken finger, jammed finger from basketball. Got to a radiography. Got home. Realized that someone messed up a podcast. And instead of being at one p.m., was it at one a.m.? So I got to sleep for two hours. I got awake at one a.m. Made the uh, webinar. Got in the morning awake. Again, and it's, it's so it's so much roller coaster. You know, sometimes you have this roller coaster life, and uh, the idea is not to identify and not to fall into the trap of feeling overwhelmed, but of course to try to avoid these type of things. But some things you can't you can't predict everything. You know, you can't predict that your kid is going to have uh, an accident. So you need to adapt to what it is as it is, not to stay fixed into your rigid mindset that. The future should be like this because it's like you're a, you're a, like a painter, but you're not the only one who's painting your reality. You know, you have other other uh, factors which are affecting your uh, your picture. Yeah, totally. When you look at the scale of the universe, like it's almost like an ant trying to predict what the weather will be or something. It's like we need to be a little bit more humble in some way. Like we we would maybe prefer it goes that way, but we have to live with a lot of acceptance here of that. Hey, it's not going to go always the way you want. Like, hey, look at the scale of the planet, the solar system, the universe, yeah. whatever. It's like, come on, <laughs> you want everything yeah. to go your way, really? If everybody yeah. had a vote on if it's going to rain, it's always going to rain on somebody's birthday, you know. So, <laughs> like, it, it, some things you just got to accept it, and, and that's that, you know. So, so that that's yeah. that, that's one part I can see in, in what you're saying. Yeah, very interesting uh, conversation about mindset. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's uh... We could talk for days and and not uh, not not even scratch the surface of uh, yeah. what's what's really going on. And I have another idea from what you said earlier that you are not the result. And I've seen this uh, in my earlier career as a visual artist, and I've seen this with some musician as well. People who are totally passionate and driven into their craft, and they associate themselves too much with their output. So if the, the, the painting or the music was crap, well, they feel like crap and they believe they are not worthy and so on. So it's very important to detach yourself during the process of learning. And well, you made an artwork and, and so what if it's not that great? Okay, maybe your career would be better if it was great. But, you know, worst case, you, it'll be something else. <laughs> you know, so the, the detachment is important there. Too. Yeah, and many times there are a lot of blessings in this in these guys. You know, I got so, so many moments when I... Uh, I got moments when I've said, I have to, to, to sell this business. I have to do an exit. And I got some uh, interesting offers and eventually the, the, deal, the deals were off. And I, I, I felt so frustrated about it. And afterwards, I realized that deep down, I wasn't ready to sell. I wanted to actually build this as a, uh, be, because it's like, like in life, you know, you, you can decide about your, your business. It's like you want to do a masterpiece or you want to have, 20 startups, which are making some, I don't know, one, two, three, three, 12 millions. But at the end of the day, if you want to build something sustainable, if you want to admire the life that you've made, you, you, you've, you've crafted for yourself, I think there are these moments when you, you, you need to, to look at the reality and understand that it's actually better for your future not to, uh, uh, I don't know, do the exit. Uh, make that uh, new deal or get that uh, new employee or whatever because uh, uh, that's that's also coming with uh, age i think accepting what it is as it is and quickly adapting you know it's not spending more than a few seconds to 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 regret something that is not in your control anymore and that has a lot to do with the 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 fact that accepting what it is as it is it's also qualifying you for a better future because you're not spending your time in the in the past. You're, you you should spend your uh, your your full energy in present and in future. You know, glimpsing the the future and crafting it from from, from the present. And uh, 
one aspect that I wanted to also touch here, Guillaume, it's uh, it's about the, the 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 continuous learning thing. We I learned so much. Sometimes self learning, you know, you you some somebody some sometimes you learn by by doing and by suffering. You know, I don't think that you're so happy when you're when when you're encountering some, some barriers, but you're actually learning ways of not to do it to, to do this anymore. And also you can, uh, let's say, hack your way, hack your learning by constantly looking at uh, getting the shortcuts from other people. And I think uh, the, the, as an entrepreneur, you have to be a learner and you have to, uh, to do this continuously. Yeah, you, you cannot reinvent the wheel. You have to stand on the shoulder of giants who came before you. And it's so critical. You, you see it with, with many people. Um, I'm having a bit of a memory blank on which scientist it was. It was Faraday or another one, uh, but basically, you know, top world scientist. But he was the apprentice of the previous top world scientist. You know, so it, that's often how it goes. You don't want to reinvent and rediscover all the knowledge of humanity. It's way faster to just get up to speed if you have a master teaching you, and then you can go to the next level and keep pushing the knowledge of humanity. So for sure. Uh, don't do it alone. The continuous learning is a, is a must. Uh, and, and I see it. Uh, I have sometimes phases up and down like that. And it depends what works for best for you. Some people it's books. For me, it's audiobooks. Because then yeah. I, I just travel, drive around, and, um, and I know my, my audiobooks, they're, they're getting done one after another. Each time I'm taking the car 15 minutes, there's an audiobook. Or sometimes yeah. I'm just doing the dishes or whatever, something, you know? It's like I have my audiobooks. I'm, I'm always learning. And those ideas are so precious. You know? Yeah, that's right. They stack uh, up over time yeah yeah and also in uh, that that that's uh, a, another way to learn for me it helped a lot to to teach others you know uh, i've invented a few concepts i've invented a few things in uh, in this new category that we're crafting customer value optimization and i uh, uh i i started first by doing a workshop with one of our first clients early adopters let's say our guinea pigs they 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 accepted to to test out on them and it went okay and then i've started to do these workshops and then i've started to do to 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 train my own team and then i've said let's build the, build a course but i'm lacking some knowledge and then i teamed up with other uh, professionals in the space and that's how we crafted the cvo academy and i think if you're an expert on on some specific topic you know if you if you choose your niche and if you're the best in in that you can team up with a lot of fantastic uh, teachers, which are are going to to support you. And uh, I I think that's that's another phase of learning. When you are, uh, if you want to learn something, you can be able to teach and to explain it uh, to others because it, there are these uh, uh, steps of uh, of learning. But the best is to learn by applying it, by experimenting it, and uh, 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 and then to teach the others how how to do it. That's interesting. Uh, and any other uh, sort of life experience or tips that comes top of mind on CEO mindset for or entrepreneurs journey mindset? Well, what what can I say? I think it's uh, 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 another angle which is uh, uh, which is important is uh, this concept of uh, uh, let's say having the right people you know to to, oh, yeah. to to surround yourself with the right people on the 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 right seat it's yeah. uh, uh i've been experiencing this uh, at the beginning of uh, my last my uh, this company because we are we are exploring something that was never done before and we we are inventing things we are uh, using some models some ways to segment the audiences and so on so i I had the at the beginning when you have a startup, you, you have a lot of generalists. Yeah, you have people, the jack of all trades, which is doing this, that, and the other. But it comes a point, and you need to understand when is that point where you have a strong bond with that person that was with you from the very beginning. Maybe you you made the leap and you became a better CEO, a better founder, but maybe that individual has not made the leap and he's not specialized in a particular thing. And you need to 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 have the heart. To, I mean, it's an act of love. It's not attachment. We because that's that's what I've struggled with. I had to let go a few people after we we made our fundraise and we were in a better position to hire more professional people, specialized people. 
And I had to, to come to terms with myself on letting go of the first employees that were with me, but they weren't fit anymore. I haven't found any seat for them because they were good at a lot of things, but they weren't fantastically good at specific things. And uh, there's a book here. I recommend it to you and to uh, whoever is listening, The On Purpose Business Person. I think it's a fantastic book. I think the Everest for an entrepreneur is to come out, to, to constantly chase opportunities for his employees, his or her employees, to, to thrive and to evolve and to, to realize when they are not fit anymore and to come up with a way to, to, to find out the new job for them to scout for opportunities for them, where, where they should be going next from, from your company. And, uh, and I think that's a fantastic uh, step. And I, uh, I'm looking forward to, to come out, to, to get into that position, to, to, to easily spot who's not fit and to come up with a, a plan so that we can, I can help them make progress in their careers because Maybe it's not the right place here, but maybe they are fantastic in some friend's company or some other client's company. Maybe they are better in larger companies where they, they could be working on some aspect with their pace. Maybe, maybe our, our pace is too, too fast for them and they are not fit here. But it, it, it's not about, uh, I don't know, throwing them out of the train. It's about uh, helping them make progress and, uh, uh, as well. And uh, I think that that's an important aspect for uh, whoever is running a, a company. And at the end, uh, on the other hand, you can't continue to, to make this kind of trade-offs. So if you've identified someone which is not the right person, if you don't have, I don't know, top level people on your key positions, you need to do this uh, uh, to, 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 to simply replace them. Because as a CEO, as a manager, actually, not only as a CEO, you have three main tools. You, need, you can hire, you can fire, and, or you can train or coach people. You, you, these are your tools. And you need to know exactly for all the people that you have in your, uh, in your team that maybe you should fire them or maybe you should train them because, or you should just step out of their way. You, know? you just need to, to help them uh, thrive without being so uh, so much in uh, in their life. Just to 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 actually have this this approach where you are helping them make progress. Because if they make progress, your company is going to make progress as well. Yeah, right. This is uh, difficult. The uh, right person, right seat. And when a company grows over many years, the person has the responsibility to keep growing as well and to follow you in that growth. That they that they've done their part of. of continuous learning of working on themselves and so on. I remember one employee had been with us for seven years and it was difficult, you know, it's like, Hey, you need to, to keep growing. You cannot stay on the level of where we were. And that, that was very annoying, but it was required. So I, I understand what you mean. There's very, uh, it's very important. That's right. Yeah. So for the, Very, uh, very interesting uh, sharing uh, of uh, leadership lessons there. Uh, and it's challenging to find those people very often and you need to invest time and very often, uh, and especially when you, you go from a startup phase and you move up. Like now we have two person at HR. For, so hiring is not too hard and it's not as hard as it was before. It's always difficult finding top talent, but you know, at least I have two person doing the scouting, the validating, and now I can just do the final interview. But it takes time to get there. Um, and that was very, uh, very, very challenging, but I can remember even the early days of the company and th uh, those concepts are still true today, bigger, like, okay, what's holding you back to go to the next level? Let's say I hired a person, a part-time administrative assistant to do 20 hours a week, but instead of having me to personally come in and do all the billing, uh, first thing in the morning to be sure we had the cash flow, you know, well, then she was trained, took a while, maybe a year, year and a half. And then, and then I was totally out of that role. And it actually saved me like at first 20 hours yeah. a week and then eventually even more than that. And then each role that you can totally train yourself out of a job, it, each time it always brings amazing growth to the company. So sometimes the, the best growth strategy is not even like, oh, the new uh, pay-per-click campaign the technique of the month or something like that, but it's actually hiring one person is going to take away a lot of responsibilities from you so you can train yourself out of a job in that specific seat and put someone in charge who's accountable 
and has a vision. And also another thing is people will work differently to achieve the results. We have to be careful about telling people how to do their job. Yes, we want to have standard operating procedures to scale up the company, but those are more people who will just like execute a proven procedure. If we're hiring like higher level managers, then it's more about giving them objectives that are clear. What, what, what do we want to achieve? And how do we know that it is done? Like, uh, you know, definition of done. Definition that, of done. Exactly. How do we know we've achieved the goal? And does it meet yes or no this way? And then it's just measurement, it's just supervision by metrics. Like, are you hitting the metrics? But to really step out of the way, it's like, you do it whatever way you want. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. Uh, even though we had a way to do it before, you can change everything if you want. As long as you hit the metrics and you're well in progress, you know, to, to go hit that goal. So, yeah. um, and in terms of the metrics, I think here, Guillaume, I can, I can uh, plug in something really important for, for people which are in, uh, in e-commerce. I think the, uh, what's happening right now in the market is that the e-commerce is transforming so much because we are not playing the same game that we used to uh, in e-commerce. Up until this moment, we were doing acquisition and we, we were guiding ourselves by traffic, by revenue, by things like conversion rate. And I think this formula, this, the e-commerce growth formula, I think it must be updated uh, as well. So we have traffic multiplied by the conversion rate multiplied by the AOV. By, and, and that's happening because- Average the, order the, value, AOV. Right. Yeah, average order value, yeah. But what's, what's happening is that we need to take into account the, the customer lifetime value as well and our initial investment. The, uh, a few mistakes that e-commerce companies are doing, at least the seven-figure ones are doing a lot, is that they are not focusing on the future revenue coming from the initial uh, customers. And they are not calculating the CAC payback, you know, how, in how many months or days Am I going to, to, to break even or uh, by investing in acquiring a customer, right? Because if you know these figures, the customer lifetime value versus the customer acquisition cost, if you have a healthy ratio between, between those two, then you can scale like crazy. Because the one who's going to win in e-commerce, Jeff Bezos said that as well, who's winning in the market is that player which can afford to pay the most to acquire a customer. Because that means speed, you know, you can acquire, your, uh, that company can acquire most of the customers and that, that's going to quickly get them into a position where they, they can uh, control the market. And that's why I've been so obsessed with customer lifetime value because nobody is actually uh, teaching those things. Everybody uh, is teaching about ROAS, cookies, whatever, CTR, CPCs, because Facebook and Google as they have their vested interest in teaching people around those uh, advertising methods, you know, because yeah. that's their way to do customer value optimization for them, you know, because yeah. they, they want to, to, to make you as a company keep spending money to acquire new customers. But what about the existing customers? What about the customer experience? What about ways to improve the revenue that you're getting, the value that you're getting from, from your customers? And that has a lot to do with the, uh, uh, a structured way and a methodology towards that. And that's why I'm so passionate about, uh, about this thing. Yeah, because you're you're talking like conversion rate optimization stuff like that. Those are tactics, and Google will like click through rate CTR and stuff like that. But they make you focus on on tactics. And you're talking like, no, you as a CEO bring back the thinking to the strategic level, higher level. And, and okay, yeah. what's my global game plan to grow the the e-commerce company here? And, and I, I see a lot of those companies, seven or eight figure businesses there, especially lower uh, eight figure businesses that say, hey, let's just yeah. acquire all. Uh, customers sort of at cost and then we'll make money on the second or third or, uh, purchase, you know, and, and that's yeah. their growth strategy. And some are doing it more like uh, more or less gut feeling rough numbers. Some are very precise and uh, sophisticated in their method that they have exact costing with proper software and all that. And of yeah. course, proper uh, numbering on this will allow you to grow faster, safer with less anxiety and with much better performance than, than yeah. the, the gut feeling approach there. That's right. And Many business owners right now, there is uh, such a crowded space in e-commerce. All the traditional retailers got to online. We have 41% of the, uh, of the total e-commerce companies being launched post-pandemic. So there are <laughs> four out of 10 players haven't been around for more than two years. And that means the competition is higher 
and you need to differentiate yourself. And I think the customer experience is the next arena to differentiate yourself because at the end of the day, the consumers are so powerful. I mean, if you want to change your the, the, the place from where you are buying uh, clothes or groceries or whatever, it's like you simply do an alt tab on your desktop or you simply open up another app or another tab in your uh, mobile browser. So that means you as a company, you need to do conscious efforts to realize if what you're selling is satisfying your customers. Are your customers happy? And that means tracking NPS. Are you doing the right job? Are you making the, your customers uh, activating what we call as the second e-commerce growth flywheel? When you are making, as, an, uh, as a uh, company, you are making your customers so uh, delighted that they are coming back to buy again and that, that they achieve your, the network effect. They talk to you, their relatives and you have the word of mouth effect. So that's the second e-commerce growth flywheel when you are relying on customers that come back and talk about your business and not only the first e-commerce growth flywheel, which it means betting on SEO, playing the acquisition game so that you acquire customers that never come back because that's not sustainable and a lot of verticals are highly dependent on uh, future orders from their uh, first-time customers. Yeah, especially if you're not playing that more advanced, sophisticated game there, you're not competitive because your uh, competitor there knows that he can spend, let's say, three times more than you to acquire one new customer because he knows his lifetime value and he has maybe even also the classic, it's nothing new, it's been around like 20 years ago, it was still there, 15 years ago, whatever, that you have a back-end funnel of additional orders, perhaps you have additional emails going out, and he knows that he can make more uh, lifetime value out of one customer, and he can think in lifetime value and not just like, okay, how much it costs me to get one visitor to come to my website and to get one order out of that one PPC, pay-per-click ad campaign there. So it's a, there's a bigger game. Another thing that's important to keep in mind is there are cycles in the market. Like you just said, I didn't know that stats, but I'm not surprised at all with COVID that something like four out of 10 business e-commerce were not there two years or a few years ago. Totally makes sense. Uh, we had a lot of clients coming uh, to us or potential clients say, either I go e-commerce or I die right now with COVID because yeah. the store is closed by federal order, you know, yeah. <laughs> and because Mandates. of this. And exactly. So i say, okay, so for sure, there's a lot of competition happening and there's a lot of things that you, you just cannot foresee them. Sometimes it can be the next big uh, Google algorithm change that, you know, drops some big competitor. And it's been seen horror stories like this in the past. Like, okay, the, they bought a lot of inventory. They are able to turn over, let's say, a million dollar a month or something like that. And then they lose their Google ranking after a bad update yeah. for them. And then they're stuck with like $2 million of inventory they cannot sell. They lost the ranking. So for sure, there's a question of diversification and to think about the risk management there. But there's more than that. There, there are cycles. So even though you may have a competitor that's like dominating the market, okay, but what's the next battleground I can go to to start preparing to think more in cycles of a few years, yeah. not just like, okay, this year we're doing, let's say, average in the market, whatever, but okay, look at what I'm preparing for the next battleground where I can take them ahead in the curve. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you have this free horizon of your project. You know, you, you have the immediate three months horizon. You have the one to three years uh, horizon. And the best companies out there can have three to 10 years horizons where you invest right now into the future. The, the idea is that Few companies are having the luxury to invest for, for in the future. And for instance, we've been lucky to identify a new trend and to identify what our customers are uh, uh, going to need. And we, we've been, I've been drying my mouth talking about uh, customer value optimization. And now we have 500 students which are certified with, uh, with these systems. And mainly, I think this is going to be uh, the, the next wave in, in e commerce for agencies as well to come up with ways to actually make, the, uh, make their customers not only survive, but also thrive. And uh, the, the data-driven agencies, I think, are the ones that are going to win the, the, the game and the e-commerce companies as well, which are using data and patterns and anomalies and they're easily spotting trends so that they can make decisions based on data, not on, uh, let's say, assumptions. Exactly. This is an amazing conversation, uh, Valentin. We're coming on top of the hour. Do you have uh, anything else 
top of mind that you'd like to share before we uh, finish this episode? Uh, I think what I what I want to share with uh, our our audience is that uh, uh, we we have these uh, free courses in our CVO Academy because customer behavior it's one of them. Uh, there's another one. It's a mini course around customer lifetime value optimization. I invite them all, anyone to that wants to level up their their e-commerce game to uh, to, to get it. It's completely free. And uh, as the last thought. I think it's uh, crucially important to to believe in uh, your your north star metric. So if you're an entrepreneur, if you're uh, an employee, if you determine what's your north star and envision your 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 best future, your brightest future and I can guarantee that if you make efforts toward that uh, bright future and if you believe in it, if you make efforts towards it, if you learn how to to tackle it, I think you're going to going to get there. But I think Few few people are are so determined to keep the eye on the uh, the eyes on the prize, right? Where do you want to go? So if you don't have that, maybe it's time to to realize where you want to go. If you have a company, where do you want to go with that company? And this is this stuff works. I mean, I can tell you, I'm a former poor kid from Bucharest. I had no money to buy a pretzel. I've been building four companies. Now I'm we have a lot of contracts with big companies coming to us, and we help them with those advanced things around data driven uh, growth for them and I, I, i've seen this on my own skin that this stuff uh, this stuff works so that being said that was it from uh, from igio yeah and just to uh, go a bit uh, with what you just said here about having that north star vision and all that it's becoming more important than ever people have been talking about this in business also forever before but now people are demanding it in the employment market uh, new generation coming in or with COVID, there was that great resignation of a lot of people yeah. questioning their life choices, reorganizing their lives and working from home. And there's a, there's a big shuffle happening in the workspace and people want to have a, a meaningful cause to work for and to have clear declaration of values from companies like, okay, what do you stand for? Tell me clearly. And it's not better not be some dusty thing printed on a wall. I, I want to see that the company is living those values, uh, you know, hiring, firing, re rewarding, and reviewing based on the values and where are we going with the company's mission. And not everything has to be a big mission like Elon Musk, let's bring mankind on Mars and be a multi-planetary yeah. species. Okay, that's that's the craziest of all vision and worse, he might actually pull it off. But uh, you need to declare a clear vision and mission statement for the company. And, and it makes a difference in the alignment of the whole team, performance of the whole team, and anyway, yeah. it's going to be more and more just the table stake uh, of the game because a lot of employers are clarifying this right now. And it's not just like greenwashing or anything like this. It's, it has to become authentic uh, values that are live with a clear North Star. Of what's your company's mission? That's right. Well, uh, Valentin, this is a, a very enjoyable uh, discussion on CEO mindset. Uh, thank you for being here. If somebody wants to get in touch with you, uh, what's the best way? I'm a LinkedIn person, so you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm uh, all, all, almost uh, daily there. And if you think I can help you out, just uh, shoot me a, a message. Awesome. Thank you, Valentin. Thank you, Guillaume. And thanks, everyone, for uh, watching or listening to us today.